What's up guys, Paul Salmon here. So if you fly a Cessna 150 and you decide to go full flaps and drop them all the way down 40 degree flaps, why don't you just do this instead? And we'll talk about why, and that's coming up next. Well, I've kind of forgotten how little you can see out of a damn airplane. Piece of helicopter, I like can see everything all around me. High wing airplane, you can't see jack diddly shit above you. Yeah, drop about 10 degrees of flaps there. That right wing down a little into the wind. Keeping her streak with the left pedal. So for those of you that watch the channel, you'll uh, if you saw my previous videos I had about having engine outs, I actually had three engine outs in one day in the Cessna 150. Uh, managed to get the aircraft back on the ground each time, didn't tear anything up, and that was good. But I got to thinking about it, and I thought all through the years about uh, different times that uh, the uh, 150 had tried to kill me. <laughs> and one, one particular episode stood out uh, uh, quite prominently, and it has to do with uh, landing the aircraft in a short distance. I grew up over in Carroll, Illinois, and uh, we used to mow off the approach end of runway two, we used to mow the grass uh, for about 250 or so feet. Uh, off the end of the runway and we mowed that thing at least once a week so it stayed in really good shape it was a great place to come in you could do a grass drift landing all, all you had was 250 feet and you know you're not a real Cessna 150 pilot unless you could get it in there <laughs> and get it stopped so in an effort to get the aircraft into that short distance what we would do was we would uh, drop the aircraft down to 40 degree flaps and then kind of drag it in with power and you could get real accurate on getting the thing uh, onto the grass at the very beginning of the grass and get it stopped before you got to the runway. Now, it did help if you had a good 15 or 20 knot wind that you were landing in, into. So one day I'm coming in, I've got, I'm on short final, I've got my flaps all the way down to 40 degrees, carrying in a fair amount of power. <clears throat> and as luck would have it, um, there was a gentleman whose nickname was Fod Rod. He was a hell of a pilot. And if he wasn't flying airplanes, he was running the tractor and mowing the grass out there. He loved to hang out at the airport. So as I'm coming in on runway two, he's coming down runway one four, mowing the grass with the tractor. And it looked like he was going to get to right to my runway about the time I was ready to touch down. And I wasn't sure if he was going to come up on the runway or not. So I just selected to go ahead and go around. So I came in full power, came off with a carburetor heat. I hit the flap switch and nothing happened. <laughs> stayed down 40 degrees flaps and that aircraft was not climbing and at the time I probably weighed about 140 pounds and I'm in there full power at 150 and maybe it was a little bit weak because you know it was a 66 model and this was about 1979 so had a few hours on it but it was not climbing well as luck would have it I had enough runway out in front of me good hard surface runway I just came out of the power a little bit set the aircraft down and actually got it stopped before I ran off the end of the uh, the runway I had to make the decision quick but it was pretty uh, pretty easy once you made the decision just to get it back onto the runway so aviation, very similar to the practice of medicine, the difficult part sometimes is to make the decision, right? The interventions that you're going to do sometimes can be relatively simple. In the practice of medicine, maybe you put a chest tube in, intubate somebody, whatever, you know. In aviation, it may be to get out of the power and get that damn thing back on the ground, all right? So the decision sometimes is the hardest part. And once you make the decision, you know, your path is clear. You know what you're doing, right? But indecision will get you killed. So just like in aviation, just like in medicine, once you make that decision, yeah, that helps a lot. Indecision can literally get you killed. So a little bit of history about the 150 and the 152 Cessna. Uh, they brought out the Cessna 152 about 1977 or 1978. Don't quote me, it was one, one year or the other, I believe, maybe 79. But anyway, when you look at articles that describe the changes between the 150 and the 152, they talk a lot about the fact that it had a little bit more horsepower, I think it had another eight or 10 horsepower, uh, carried a fair amount more gas, uh, TBO was extended, I uh, don't remember exactly how much, but you never hardly ever see anybody mention the fact that the flap deflection was changed and they decreased the amount of full flaps from 40 to 30 degree flaps, all right? 
30 degree flaps. And I've never seen a real succinct explanation for as to why, but you gotta wonder if it wasn't horror stories from people dropping the, the flaps 40 degrees and having to make a go around and just not being able to climb out in the aircraft. So anyway, one of the major changes in my mind in the 152 was not so much more horsepower, more fuel, more TBO, all that, but the fact that they changed the flaps from 40 degree flaps to 30 degree flaps, which was a great, <laughs> great improvement. So I'm gonna review part of a uh, video that uh, illustrated uh, my old buddy, Dan Greider, who had a accident where he was with a gentleman and they decided to make a uh, short field landing and they had dropped the, the uh, flaps to 40 degrees in a Cessna 150. They decided to do a go around and the flaps would not come up. Does this sound familiar to you? And so uh, they uh, brought the aircraft back around, decided that it was not climbing. And uh, so they decided to uh, put it into a cornfield and not try to make it back to the runway, which was absolutely the correct decision to put it into the corn. So what uh, kept these guys alive in this? Well, the decision to put it into the corn. Again, sometimes making the decision is the hard part. And when uh, Dan made the decision to put it down in the corn and not try to limp the aircraft back and risk a stall spin scenario, um, he basically saved their behind. And that is what kept them from having a catastrophic outcome here. Retract, I look at the uh, circle breakers, everything was fine there in the masters on. Our radios are on. Our electrical's good. Man, you're still with us. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I mean that, that, we're sitting here like, you know, why is he, you know, what, what, full flaps? I mean, is he doing slow flight or no, what is it, you know? No, they would not retract. Wow, it's okay. okay. I crash airplanes all the time. It's not a, it's <laughs> yeah. not, it's well, not a big deal. Th this it's thing happened deal. to me in flight, in tra flight training. We had the 172 SP lift the flaps nothing happened and my instructor just cycled the switch a bunch of times and it came back but yeah. you we know tried hear that we tried we tried everything we could and then it's finally like we are out of energy the corn's soft mm -hmm. we're going to take it wings level into the corn as slow as we can i just chopped the power and went like that it's okay, you're right. very nice very yes, nice we're good man dan i'm, I'm glad oh, yeah. you're okay both of you guys i'm, I'm, both I'm glad i'm okay yeah, yeah i hear you my okay. guys yeah, so we can do this again next year yeah well here's an interesting one went to make an evening flight in the Cessna 150 and uh, went to do a little approach, but it didn't look right. So we did a go around from about a hundred feet, but on this particular airplane, the flaps would not retract. So we messed with flaps, but because we made our approach at flaps 40, um, they wouldn't retract. And it's flaps on this are electrical. So um, the flaps would not retract, and I don't know why, but circuit breaker's good, electrical is good. Yes, we're good. Yep, we're all good. I saw you. I said they might crash. Yeah. You guys turned crosswind. The flaps would not retract. The flaps would not retract. degrees, the won't We did a low approach, and just to look at it, when we did a go around, we added power and turned the carb heat off. Okay, snow fuel. Yeah, the fuel is the Okay guys, so I hope you from now on would be really hesitant about dropping 40 degree flaps in a Cessna 150. Just on the outside chance that the flaps may not retract. They're electrical flaps and if you got a problem with the switch, the motor, whatever, the, the uh, flaps may not come back. In my case, I do believe it was the fact that the ground wire had came off and uh, the flaps went off. Now, why did they work good enough to get the flaps down? <laughs> but, wouldn't, uh, but I couldn't raise the flaps? Good question. Good old Murphy's Law kicks in occasionally. Okay, so remember, the next time you think about dropping 40 degree flaps on your Cessna 150 to come in for a landing, just do this. Okay, <laughs> I hope you guys liked the video. Be real hesitant to go full flaps in a Cessna 150. And uh, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next video.